So we'll look at a demonstration of debugging. And the example we're going to look at is uh, revisit our, our um, module C2. If you recall, in module C2, we had the microcontroller controlling a LED that was connected to port F pin 1. And um, the idea was that this uh, LED that was connected here would flash at a certain frequency. So um, what we did was we, uh, we assumed our function uh, functionality would be something like this. That is, we would have the LED on for a certain amount of time, off for a certain amount of time, on again, off again, and so on. So the specification told us that we should have it on for 0.1 second, on, off for 0.1 second, and on again for 0.1 second, off again for 0.1 second, and so on. So we, we did not, however, clarify whether this was behaving as expected. So one way to do that, and, uh, and one way to do that is to uh, hook up a logic analyzer, a logic analyzer to this. And the logic analyzer will give us a visual plot of it. So as opposed to using a logic analyzer, what we're going to do um, in, in module 9, C9, is we will engage this idea of functional debugging. We'll use this idea of functional debugging using instrumentation. What that means is we will, rather than use a, a logic analyzer, we will collect data. So instrumentation is about collecting data. And we will collect data uh, whereby we will, uh, we will use the cystic counter. We will use a cystic counter. Okay. So we will engage the cystic counter to monitor uh, and record values. So we will uh, get the cystic value at this point, uh, at this point, at this point, and so on at, at various points. And we will measure the difference between these two times. So we will uh, measure these, this dif time difference uh, and this time difference and so on. And we will collect around 50 of these time differences, 50 samples, if you will, and write them into an array. So there'll be an array called time. And we will write these values into this time array. So that once I stop my program, so this will be in C9, once I stop my program, I will look at these values and verify whether they meet the functional requirements. So that's the plan. So let's look at C2 so that we can pick up where we, uh, with what we uh, started. So here's my program C2. Um, what you will see here is, uh, is my code um, that has a main, and the main here had had a port F in it. And in this case, the port F in it is simply going to um, change the uh, change, uh, set up port F pin one as output. Um, some of these comments are, are out of, uh, they're not right, because all we're really doing is uh, uh, setting. In fact, I'll change them right now. So let me change those. 
So we're, we're all we're doing is PF1 is make PF1 output. And that's what you want to do. And where the, there's a built-in LED, which is going to blink at a certain rate. And so what we're doing then is we are in this code, we are reading the LED value from the data register, uh, performing an exclusive OR operation on it, which will change it from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, depending upon what the current value is, write it back out, so delay for a certain amount of time, and repeat this process. And we calculated the delay to be this loop where we start with a counter, and this counter is, is counted down, and we, when we run this code, so I'm going to run this code uh, in simulation. So let's make sure it's in simulation. And I say OK. And I debug this code. And I notice that if I, if I were to run it, I'm going to use my default view, which is uh, the disassembly view. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that which is reset view to defaults. And at this point, if I run this code, I will, I will be able to see that the LED is flashing. Now, this doesn't tell me whether the LED is flashing according to our specification. So one of the things I can do is I can go and use the use a logic analyzer. And in this logic analyzer, I'm going to uh, move this so that there's enough room to, for us to watch what the logic analyzer is doing. And I already set it up so that it's going to show me um, the pin PF1. I stop it. So let me move this viewer out of the way. And I always make sure that I turn these two buttons on, the cursor button, so that I can actually measure. So I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit so that I can see more of this. And now I can click here where is where it turns on and I go all the way to where it's it's does one cycle of on and off and I when I do that uh, it tells me that it's around 4.9 so let me click that again so I'll go from there to there and it tells me that it's around 5.023 hertz, which is exactly what we wanted, which means that uh, the time delay between these two is uh, these two points is 0.2 seconds. And the time delay between uh, on and off is, is exactly 0.1, not exactly, but pretty close to 0.1 seconds. But what if we didn't have a logic analyzer, which is more likely to be the case? So how do we how do we do this? And uh, the logic analyzer, by the way, is a non-intrusive de non -intrusive debugging technique. Uh, we're using, we'll now uh, switch to a slightly intrusive, a minimally intrusive technique, which allows us to work not just in simulation, but also on the real board, like we mentioned. So that will be our, uh, our next video.